Good morning. Here on April the 6th of 2017, reading in Deuteronomy chapters 29 and 30, some of my favorite scriptures that um, helps me are in, are in these readings. So I really enjoyed this morning's reading and um, I hope I know that you did too. I, I want to read just a little bit to us. Um, again, Moses is getting ready to send them out to go into the promised land, the land flowing of milk and honey. It is when the, um, all of the promises of God was going to be fulfilled for the Israelites. <clears throat> and Moses is just pouring into him. I mean, he's been with them for 40 years in the desert. Uh, he's an older man now, and but he was of great strength. He, he didn't falter physically at all, even though he was older, the Bible says. But anyway, I, I just uh, can't help but think, you know, 40 years with them. He, he's seen lots of things. He's heard lots of things. He's been with them through the good times. He's been with them through the bad times. And these are the words. These are the most important words because he knows he's not going with them. These are the most important words that he could come up with or that God gave him to speak to them as they were getting ready to go into the promised land. So I want to start reading in chapter 30, verse 1. And when all these things come upon you, the blessing and the curse, which I've set before you, and you call them to mind among all the nations where the Lord your God has driven you and return to the Lord your God, you and your children, and obey his voice and all that I command you today with all your heart and with all your soul. Then the Lord your God will restore your fortunes and have compassion on you and he will gather you again from all the peoples where the Lord your God has scattered you. Um, I'm going to keep reading right there. <clears throat> Find my place again. If you're outcasts or in the uttermost parts of heaven, from there the Lord your God will gather you, and from there he will take you. And the Lord your God will bring you into the land that your fathers possess, that you may possess it. Now, if you've listened to me before, you know that as I read these, I take this very personal. I take this as a, a direct <clears throat> word from God for me. Um, even though we live under the new covenant, the blessings are the same. I mean, we're hearing God's heart towards us, what, what God wants for us. God doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And so what he wants, wanted for them, giving them the land, the land represented the promise to them, is the same thing he wants for us and the promises that he's given to us. So as I read this, that's, that's what it's speaking to me. It's encouraging me that, it, you know, God is a good God. He loves us. He wants good things for us. And it, and it really encourages me every, sing, every single time I read it. And the Lord your God will bring you into the land. He'll bring you into the promise that your fathers possess, that you may possess it. And he will make you more prosperous and, and more numerous than your fathers. And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your offspring so that you will love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. See, he will circumcise our heart. He will point out the things to us that needs to change. Um, I shared with you yesterday one of those circumcisions of my heart that God did inside of me. And then, bam, by afternoon, there's a, there's a new uh, it, a thing that took place having to do with my mouth and my words yesterday that uh, God just really, <laughs> I just love how he corrects us. And he doesn't do it through guilt. He doesn't do it through condemnation. It's just a gentle prodding of putting us on the right path when we allow him to. It's a submission. It's a submission to him. It's a, it's a giving up my way of doing things. Okay, Lord, it's not about me. It's all about you. So I submit and I'll do it your way, not my way. And you shall again obey the voice of the Lord and keep all of his commandments that I command you today. The Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all the work of your hand. Everything you touch will be blessed. In the fruit of your womb and in the fruit of your cattle and the fruit of your ground. See, these are already things that have already happened. Everything you touch is prosperous. You are abundantly prosperous. Um, your cattle is prosperous. The fruit of your ground is prosperous. The difference is whether we believe or we don't believe. 
Do we believe what he says or do we not believe? Well, if I wake up every day wondering, I don't know where the next dollar is going to come from. I better get out there. I got to, I got to, I got to. Then we're not believing that, that if we will obey God, he will make our way straight. He makes a crooked path straight. He leads us through his wisdom that's inside of us on the right path always. And the right path is prosperity. And, and prosperity is, has so little to do with money. It has so much more to do with my spiritual alignment with him, with a level of peace that I have when I lay my head on the pillow at night. Um, the, the finances is a byproduct of it. For the Lord will, again, take delight in prospering you as he took delight in your fathers when you obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes that are written in the book of the law when you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. He wants all of you. He doesn't want you holding anything back. So uh, one of my favorite scriptures comes up here um, pretty quick, but I love how already I started where I started because he starts off in what I just read, chapter 30, verse 1, and when all these things come upon you, the blessing and the curse which I've set before you, and then here we are in verse 15, C, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you today by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways, and by keeping his commandments and his statutes and his rules, then you shall live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you're entering to take possession of it. Uh, he sets before us life and death. Every decision we make is either going to be a decision of life or it's going to be a decision of death. We create the environment that we live in through the decisions that we make. And the decisions comes from the words we speak and from the thoughts we have. And so submission to God allows him to transform our mind, to renew our mind, the Bible says. Renew our mind so that we have his thoughts. His thoughts become our thoughts. Our thoughts become his thoughts. And we don't know where we begin and he ends um, oftentimes. Um, and then, then my favorite verse in today's reading, <clears throat> verse 19. So it's Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life. See, he, he gives us the question, uh, gives us the opportunity, I should say. I'm going to set before you every single day decisions for blessings, a decision for curse. I'm going to set before you the opportunity to choose life or to choose death. And then he gives us the answer, choose life. He wants us to choose life. He gives us free will to choose, however. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring. What a promise that is. You and your offspring may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice and holding fast to him, for he is your life. Mm, there is no life outside of him. We can live hell on earth if we choose other than him. That's for sure. <clears throat> um, uh, in Luke, we're reading Luke uh, chapters 11 and 12 today, and just a couple of scriptures I'll highlight. Um, I think this is chapter 12. Luke 12, verse 2. Um, powerful scriptures right here. Um, Nothing is covered up that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. Therefore, whatever you have said in the dark shall be heard in the light, and what you have whispered in private rooms shall be proclaimed on the housetops. God knows our every thought. He knows every single thing going on in our life. There's nothing hidden from him. But what I love about this scripture is oftentimes for many years, um, um, for many years I'd read this and it was that everything would be uncovered. You know, the world would know and, and they do. I mean, it is, it is that what's hidden will be, will be made known. But when we have this need to know inside of ourselves, when we have this need to control, when we have this need, I gotta, I gotta, oh, if only I, if, if I, that is our inability to trust what this scripture says, that anything I need to know, it's going to be made known to me. <laughs> anything I need to know, he will reveal to me. 
And then, and then the responsibility of it isn't on my shoulders anymore. It's on God's shoulders. So, um, and, 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 and that's about the outer world. That's about our horizontal relationships that anything I need to know, he's going to reveal it to me one way or another. But, but this is what I really love about this because I constantly pray, God, if there's anything in me that's not of you, get rid of it. It's got to go. I, I submit to you. I submit to you. And I do that because there's stuff in me that still, I, I want it out. I want it to come out. And there's stuff I don't even know about. See, this is what this is talking about. Anything hidden with it within us that's not of him that what would represent darkness, right, will be made known. It will come to light. See, that's what he did with me through what I believe my deliverance has been this year is he, he revealed in me for the first time. I mean, I'm in my late fifties and in my first, the first few months of, of uh, first ending months of last year, he started revealing things to me. And I had an awareness of this poverty mentality, this lack, this living in a world of lack and how I was sabotaging um, the blessings that God was giving me. And, 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 I, and I submitted to him, and, and I told him I want it to come out. I want it to come out. Well, that had been hidden to me my adult life. I didn't, I didn't know anything about that. It's, just, it's like the rejection I talked about earlier this week. You know, um, I had a wonderful, wonderful lady that wrote in to me and in private said, you know, that she's in her late 50s, and she'd never known she operated under a spirit of rejection. And she questioned for a, for a moment God's timing and then said, well, God's timing is perfect. And it is perfect. God's timing is perfect. And he reveals to us what we need to know. And it'll, he'll always reveal it. But this is the thing. It's not, he's, not, he's not cracking the whip from heaven and, and bending you over the bed with a belt. He's, he's rising up inside of you in love. And, and, and it's not a harsh correction it's not a harsh circumcision you know they circumcise the babies on the eighth day because of the nerve endings being at the perfect state to cause the baby the least amount of pain that's what he does with our circumcision it's going to be exactly when we're ready when his timing is perfect when we're able to deal with it without guilt and condemnation for there is therefore now no condemnation in Christ. There, there is no condemnation. Just because he's correcting me and putting me back up on the narrow road doesn't mean that there's any guilt or condemnation in it. It means that there's love in it. There's love in it. Nothing is covered up that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. Therefore, whatever you have said in the dark shall be heard in the light. He's talking about our thoughts. Whatever you've said in the dark, whatever you've thought, <clears throat> shall be heard in the light and what you have whispered in private rooms shall be proclaimed on the mountaintops. He is a good God and he loves us. And too often our image of God is, is, is uh, formed. Uh, the, the image we have of God has been formed through the fallenness of man. The bad things our moms and dads did to us, the bad things this person or that th person did to us, um, and we get a bad image of God. And, and that's why it's so important that we read and that we listen to him and we hear him and we, what we hear from him, we bounce against his written word because this is a gift from him that we understand his purity. And his purity is totally pure. It's holy. It's righteous. And it is love. God is love. Um, verse seven, why even, why, why even, why even the hairs of your head are all numbered? Fear not, you are of more value than many sparrows. What a great word from God this morning. He counted the hairs on your head and you're more valuable to him than all of the sparrows that are so well taken care of. That's so good. And I'm going to end with the Proverbs today. Chapter 12, verses 19 and 20. Truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. Deceit is in the heart of those who devise evil, but those who plan peace have joy. So I wish for you joy and peace today. And uh, 
bright, sunshiny spring day, and we'll chat again tomorrow. Thanks for joining me.